how many women does it take to run a restaurant badly? Three, if it's called Morgan's. You better watch out because uh, we're gonna get it. I'm grappling with girl power to save this restaurant. You with us? It's going to be handbags at dawn with Mum. Don't tell me to shut up, God. Okay. I won't be spoken to you like that. Okay. All right. And sibling rivalry is driving me demented. You tell these okay. two to do my role. Okay. And you can stick that okay. I'm sorry, there I told that. Typical. Typical. <laughs> Liverpool, a city that's shedding its rundown reputation. With rocketing house prices and £3 billion worth of investment, it's rapidly becoming hip and trendy. 18th century Walton Village is one of the city's most affluent and exclusive suburbs. This is a typical sort of footballer's wives hangout. There must be a great catchment for ladies' lunch, especially with all these amazing houses. At Walton's heart lies Morgan's. Three years ago, Sandy Morgan was an antique dealer before she changed her shop into a restaurant. The idea actually started, we were actually having dinner one night and I just said, well, I used to cook for friends here, you now turn it into a restaurant and I thought, great, why not? Sandy runs it with her two daughters, Helen and Laura. We've pulled together, fought together, we've laughed together, cried together. You, every emotion you can ever imagine, how we're all still talking to each other, I don't know. With no customers and £100,000 worth of debt, the women will lose everything in six months. Sisters are definitely doing it for themselves. <laughs> Maybe that's why we need a bit of a testosterone from Gordon. <laughs> thank you, thank you. From the outside, it looks very romantic. A perfect high street local eatery. Let's get some dinner. My name's Helen. Helen, how are you, darling? Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Likewise, and this, and this is? I'm Sandy. Sandy, please meet I'm you. I'm the mummy. What a beautiful place. <laughs> Thank you. And this Hello. is? Hi, this is Laura. Laura, how Hello. are you, darling? I'm fine. Oh, this welcome, is nice. Welcome. It's beautiful. Do you yeah. like it? And these girls serve here as well? Everything. All good all round as Every gone. single male in Liverpool should be in here today. <laughs> how many's booked? There's a yeah. table at two at half six. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, we're in September. Yeah. It's a sort of Indian summer's evening out there. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got two booked. Yeah, that's it. It needs a lot of tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> a lot Who's of running tweaking. the business? We all do. Yeah. There's three of us. Oh, three of us taking responsibility for maybe one job. Yeah. Three managers sounds like too many chiefs to me. I better eat, yes? <laughs> <laughs> right. Beautiful little smart restaurant. Very romantic and everything's slightly uh, weird. Apricots in a cream mashed potato with Lincolnshire sausage. Vanilla and whiskey sauce served with a fillet of beef. This isn't the sort of menu that ladies who lunch want. Even I don't know what kind of menu this is. The food is French English a la carte. We sort of bring in Thai influence, you know, um, Spanish. It's English a la carte, really. On one plate, sometimes you can get two or three different nationalities. Phil is Morgan's cocky but inexperienced head chef. You've got to be confident in your own ability, haven't you? Otherwise, put this between the chef. I need one soup, one prawns, one sausage, one beef pink, and one portion of eggs. You bastard! I need two starters, two mains. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely, pan-fried prawns. Smoked paprika. They're absolutely solid. Really solid. No thought. Orange segments, lemon segments in there, and prawns that are just bullets. Hard, disgusting bullets. Cumberland sausage. Cumberland sausage, thank you. Thank you. This dish is big enough for a dinosaur. It's like something out of Jurassic Park. Fucking hell. <laughs> sausage on T-Rex. Fucking hell. A cherry tomato with a mashed potato laced with fucking apricots. That is pretty dismal. This huge dish of overpriced stodge should be extinct. No wonder the locals aren't coming here. No one's going to sit down and, and, and even attempt to eat substantial mountains of food that doesn't make sense like that. Nowhere near it. Sticky toffee pudding with a butterscotch sauce in the ice cream. Junior sous chef Emma is Phil's long suffering sidekick. Her star turn is sticky toffee pudding, but Phil hates it. Babe, you know my feelings on this fucking. I know you don't like it, but. T1, I've always said 
It should not be on our menu. Trial and error. Neil turned around and go, what is that? What is that? And he'll be told, it's the Morgan's classic sticky toffee pudding. Whey! Mm, smell nice. For the first time this evening, I'm glad to be here. This is nice, light, mm. not too sticky. The person who made that dish doesn't put fucking apricot and mashed potatoes together and vanilla and whiskey. It's the verdict, didn't you? <laughs> Got a care, haven't you? What he thinks. I do anyway. Hello, everyone. Here's Gordon. He's come Hello. to meet you. Emma, how nice are you? Nice to meet you. I'm fine. Good to see you. And you're the. Um, chef de party, desserts and starters. And this is? Phil. That's chef. Phil. Chef de cuisine. Yeah, well, thanks a differ. Well, yeah, 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 no, yeah. OK. Anyway, it started off good. I arrived and I thought it was actually quite a stunning, intimate little place. Then the food arrived. Solid, rock-hard prawns. You dig deep and you come across the mashed potatoes got laced with fucking apricots, tomatoes and a red currant jus. Yeah. No, What the fuck were you thinking about putting apricots inside mashed potatoes? Do you know what, right? I actually took the recipe from the Good Food magazine. The Good Food magazine? Yeah. That's the bullshit answer. What were you well, thinking about putting it together? Well, why not? It's different. You've got every right to be slightly fucked off about it. Because I would be if I cooked that shit. And here we are, in a current situation, on our arse, and the chef over there wants to fucking laugh about it. What the fuck do you want me to do about it? You're standing there fucking mouthing me off. Yeah, fuck do you know that. What I mean? You've just shown me over the last three minutes your attitude stinks. It's just such a And you can't take criticism. I can't take criticism. It's just ways and means of going about and putting criticism across. It's the way you speak. You speak arrogantly. How would you like to be spoken to? Yeah, just like a normal person, like anyone would speak to anyone. Uh-huh. Now, let's go the other way, shall we? Please be so kind to remove the apricots from the mashed potato. See, now you're being a fucking sarcastic. No, but I, 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 I don't know how. I mean, no, listen, no. we've got a problem oh, here, right. yeah? And there's a fucking issue with the food. Mm. Now fucking Mr Chipmunk in the fucking corner's pissed off the fact that I'm telling him something constructive. See, if I can't get over that hurdle, no, there's no, there's no I might as well fuck off back on the train now. Attacks, Do you understand? Yeah. Have a, a have a word with a chef, yes? Yeah? And if he's going to fucking yeah, excuse me, I'm remove... Sorry, yeah. sorry, oh, sorry. If you want to talk to him, you talk to him. I'm talking to the owner. Like I'm a fucking kid. Fuck me. Did you like anything about the three courses? There was one saving grace, yeah, there was. The sticky toffee pudding was fucking delicious. No! <laughs> 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 oh, thank you, God. I just wish I had it for my you. fucking starter. You're welcome. Foxy! That's the nitty-gritty. Shit dinner, beautiful restaurant inside, great potential. Then trying to fucking tell the chef some form of constructive criticism, he's got a problem, not just with his food, but with his fucking gob. You've got every right to be slightly fucked off about it. Because I would be if I cooked that shit. Morgan's restaurant is an all-woman run business. Trouble is, it's not been run very well. And the chef over there wants to fucking laugh about it. You're standing there fucking smouthing me off. It's serving mountains of expensive stodge. But there's a much bigger problem. The women can't decide who's in charge. A recipe for disaster. It's a struggle sometimes and, you know, we kick off and we scream at each other and stuff. Do you know what's wrong with Arthur? just is a nightmare and I've resigned so many times. Sandy claims to be running Morgan's, but I wonder how good a manager she really is. I've decided to look at her accounts and find out. Come on. Right. How long have you been here? Uh, about two years. Nice. So where's the office? Sort of here. That's, that's the office there? God, how do you manage? I don't, it's difficult. It needs to uh, be bigger. The desk needs bloody to be bigger. hell. It's hell, because I can't let anything out. Well, look at it all jammed in there like I that. I know, I know. Sandy's account books are completely haywire. Where's your target? I need to do that. Yeah, but... No, I've... I, I've got These it. are just till... No, no, I've got that written down. I have got that written down. Where's that? Um, I, well, I can't put my hands on it right now. But you can't put your find. hands on it right now. What have you got out of it in three years? Money financially. Uh, well, we haven't. <laughs> I haven't. How much have you lost in three years? I don't know. Running a restaurant is a full-time job, not an occasional hobby. 
If Sandy can't even organise the books, it's little wonder she's hired a chef whose mouth is bigger than his talent. Right, chef. Morning. Morning. How are you? Not too bad. You? Yeah, very well, thank you. Thanks, Kev. Um, yeah. Yeah, slightly concerned, but um, a good sleep. Yourself? No, not a good kiff at all. Damn, why? Because of last night. Uh-huh. Well, that was last night, this is today. That's a good attitude. Today's another day. Mm -hmm. We live and learn. How long have you been cooking? Phil's got more confidence than ability. He's never had any formal training. But Sandy makes his job tougher because she won't pay him for preparation time. The menu, right, it's just basically being thrown together. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to come in at nine in the morning. What I, do you mean I, you're not allowed? Well, Sandy doesn't want us to come in at nine o'clock in the morning. I get so in. So how do you get ready for service? I come in at four o'clock and it's a case of throwing it together. Even I can't get fucking ready from four o'clock in the afternoon. Now it's starting to make sense why you're fucking so defensive. Totally understand. It's not entirely your fucking fault. What I want to do is fucking work together on it. No, Sandy, I look forward to it. You still want to punch me? No, I'll save that, I'll save that till next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. It's two hours before Saturday service, Morgan's only busy night of the week. With no preparation done, the kitchen's in chaos. Can There's not even enough food. The labels and just odds and sods thrown in here. What the fuck is that? Fucking dog shit. So what do you need now for service? Because the place looks sparse. If there's 30 people coming for yeah, dinner time... Yeah, it's freaking me out a bit. Mm. It's freaking... Not happening. It's freaking yeah, me out as well. So. Carrots, broccoli, beans, bread, prawns. And is this normal this time of the afternoon for you to go off to the shops like that? Yeah. yeah. So you don't actually get the stuff back then for at least another hour? Sometimes I don't get it till 6 o'clock. When the customers are walking through the door? Fuck me. Unbelievable. The head chef should order supplies. But Sandy's been buying from a supermarket because she doesn't want to pay Phil to do it for her. Before we get any further, what I wanted to say to both of you is the fucking supermarket is not good enough. If no, this it's restaurant's not. got any chance of fucking surviving, yeah? The cost yeah. is fucking well, If we had a dinner party at home, we wouldn't be sat here at fucking four o'clock looking for a fucking list, let alone running a fucking restaurant. Beans, okay, French beans, vegetables. <laughs> Beans, beans, beans. Oh, oh, God, no. No beans. Hold on, round the next one. Not a beans. Sure. Good. No, no, they're, they're sliced, they're pre-packed. Fucking hell. No way, man. Sorry. Fucking hell. This way. Do you want raw ones, good? What, what did we get yesterday? I think it was raw, yeah. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah. How many would you like? Oh. A couple of, um... Well, kilo, whatever, a few pounds. Oh, all of those and, and some more if you have. Have you got some more than, than, than what's out? <laughs> this is ridiculous, you know that? Sandy's panicked buying fillet steak, but she should have had it delivered from a cheaper wholesaler. Sandy, it's fucking five past five. Where's the fillet steak? Well, it's here somewhere. No sirloin. They must know we're coming. No. That's never happened before that they've got no fillers. Right. Rum steak, rum steak, no. How much is that, please? 53.89. 53.89. If we had to buy this produce on last night's take-ins, we'll be 30 quid fucking short. I've got a fucking headache. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. It's seven o'clock and the restaurant is filling up. Morgan's is a stunning, beautiful fucking restaurant. Unfortunately, the food is shit. The chef's way inexperienced. He's self-taught and he's cooking with fucking expensive ingredients bought from the local supermarkets. And Sandy is just another prime example of an individual that's opened a restaurant without having a clue how to run one. Tonight, I'm going to be watching Phil closely. One chef, one beef on it, one chicken, more well, medium, please. Phil's menu is poorly designed, but can he actually cook? Just watch your cooking, yeah? Standards now, yeah? Yeah. Are you happy with that? No. No, no, nor am I. You're a chef, eh? Not a fucking Coleman. No, no. No, no. Phil's just plain careless, and I won't put up with it. Watch that chicken, it's burning again. Yeah? 
That puzzle. Have we got any puzzle? Fuck you now. Kitchen started to act like fucking slobs and happy to cook charcoal and then send it. That's not good. Fucking ridiculous. I'll tell you what, he's fucking sharp and me. That's how he's got where he is, isn't he? His eyes are fucking everywhere. A customer has sent back a creme brulee. It's like fucking baby vomit. Do you know why it goes like that? Um, I think, um, quick, west too far. No, no, no. Under the grill, far too long. Don't eat that unless you're prepared to die. Phil's biggest problem is that he just doesn't concentrate. He's simply out of his depth, making silly mistakes. I just feel as if I'm just not in control at all of my own fucking kid, my own job. It's shit. Dotty Sandy's supposed to be in charge of this mess. Sandy, what are you doing? Just help them out a bit, get rid of some of the business, you know. It's, it's got a lot on tonight, and we've got no dishwasher, so we've got to give a bit of a lift. You're helping out the washer up, right? Yeah, well, you know. Sandy's interfering everywhere, doing everyone else's job and achieving Thanks. nothing. Sandy, two seconds, honey. Are you lost? Are you wondering what to do? Well, good, I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit of everything, really, to keep it Fuck all me, going. Do I know it? that? You are. What is your role tonight? What, what, what exactly are you doing? Well, I've been waiting on. Down waiting, the bar. On, waiting on what? Tables. Tables, OK. Seven. Now you're doing the wine. Wine. Have you seen the size of that fucker? He's more capable of washing and drying his own fucking plate. Well, I'm not going to do it all night. Welcome to the fucking lunatic asylum. Sandy's so busy doing the dishes that she forgot her customer's order for gravy. <laughs> He's been waiting 15 minutes and complains to Helen. So they've cleared three main courses from that table, and one guy sat there with his sausage, yeah, looking for some fucking sauce. Why is no one being straight with you and telling what they need? What, what do they want? Excuse me. It's just gravy. Start you. making it. Start making it. Yeah. yeah. He's waiting there. The food's going curl while he's waiting. They've cleared the fucking plates. They've cleared three plates. But it's only for one. It is only for one guy. He's quite happy to wait. You've got to stop kidding yourself. He's not quite happy to wait. No, of His course he's not. have cleared their main courses. Yes. It's like a fucking kindergarten here, you know that? Isn't this catering play... life thing, Paul? No, is it fuck catering life? Nothing no. like it, no. This is shambolic. It's not catering at all, fuck me. How long for the gravy, Phil? Um, at least five minutes, yeah. At least five minutes. Fuck me. Catering my fucking ass. I asked for a, uh, uh, some kind of sauce or a gravy, which came, took a while to come, uh, to be fair. 15 minutes, there, thereabouts, and I paid 15 quid. At last, I understand what I'm facing. The chef's slipshod concentration is producing terrible food. But he was hired by Sandy, and she's the real problem. An amateur restaurateur messing in a business she knows nothing about. It's depressing to watch the restaurant sink this low. Hello. That's the saddest main cause I've ever seen in my entire life. 39 years of age and seeing that. Don't take it personally. I want to know if anyone is going to take responsibility for tonight's catastrophe. What did you experience out there tonight? In general, um, a lot of people were quite happy out there, to be honest with you. You know, I, I've had no complaints all night. What fascinates me about you is you're either totally fucking oblivious to what's going on in your own establishment or you're fucking living a nightmare inside your, your mind. You cannot see what's going on. I can see what's going on, Gordon. I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. I can't see what's going on. But I can't deal with all these things on my own. I've been trying to keep this float for three years by doing a little bit of everything. Well, thank you. OK. Uh, Helen. It's diabolical. Yeah. The whole thing is yeah, just a sham. Thank you. And do you know what? You're the most fucking honest person in here. You know that. And the more honest you're going to be, OK, the more chance this place has got of fucking survival. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Gordon. Fifty percent of British restaurants close down within three years, often because their naive owners know nothing about the business. Sandy and her daughters can't decide who's in charge. Their sibling rivalry simmering away. Helen and Laura are both desperate to control the restaurant. But from what I've seen, only one sister stands out. 
there's certain issues with family and a sister wants to do it and I want to do it and mm -hmm. we're at the moment sharing it between each other sure. and I think what we need is a kick up the backside and we all need to realise that you know this is it and we need to pull one together. person to control it yeah are you capable of running this place you personally yeah I am capable of running it I think I'm the practical one in the family mm -hmm. I'm a bit more grounded than the other two <laughs> they're fantastic but mm -hmm. Very similar and a bit airy fairy. We are in the shit, are we not? Yeah, definitely. That's the reason why I need to open things up. Yeah. Everything come out, identify the issues, and, and, and start tackling them. To save the restaurant, there's got to be a radical management shake up. So today, I'm going to be cruel to be kind. All I saw last night was just individuals running around like headless chickens, acting like children. Hence the reason why we're in a fucking playground. Right, what's your role? General manager, front of house. Bollocks. No chance. No chance. This is, this is serious now. You, sadly, whether you like it or not, OK, are not capable of becoming a general manager in that establishment. We've got far too many chiefs. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you and there. And insufficient Indian. No. You need I to delegate be. to other yeah. people and tell them what she to do. She can't do it. No. She goes and washes up for 15 minutes to make sure the kitchen porter's there next week. And she, she needs to film. delegate jobs, so I agree with you. Yeah. And make I sure that, that what she's doing is... the restaurant is... manager's job. Yeah. Your job... Front yeah. of house. It's where I want to be. You're the host. Nope. Meeting and greeting and right. sitting people down, yes? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Your position is the assistant manager. Yeah. Who's, who's the manager then? Don't get defensive. Can I just do one at a time? Yes. Yeah. No one's leading. Unless I, you've got defined roles. Excuse me, roles. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, yeah, Gordon. Go on. I was away last night, and if I had have been there, things maybe would have yeah. been slightly different. Okay. But the whole shoulders of the restaurant wait on, you know, you coming in. You wouldn't have changed anything last night because it was just dire. It was shambolic, sweetheart. And it was best with your interest not to be there last night. Excuse me. One thing you've got is balls, you know that? I like the way that you fucking blatantly know what the problems are, but you've got to get it off your chest, you know that? And what are you scared about being a manager? Confrontation? No, it's not so much that. It's actually being given sole responsibility, because yeah. at the moment, yeah. you know, my sister's just walked off there, because yeah. she's obviously upset about... Are you, uh, you going to come in, or...? Yeah? Thank you. Maybe you can prove yourself, yeah. you know, look, it's fine. Look. This is not a discussion to separate you two or to argue you two. Of course it two. isn't, okay. yeah. But unfortunately, one, two, three are doing all the same job. I'm sorry, you've got it completely wrong. Let me just finish what I'm trying to say, and once we've all defined our roles, you then we can put it into the pot. It. Fine. Yeah? yeah? And clearly you're upset. Yeah, I am. Clearly upset, and that is a stinky attitude. Anyway. And how can you walk away like a I'm child? I'm the one who's ran the business on my own yeah. when these right. two are on holiday together. Okay. You tell these two okay. to do my role, and okay. you can stick that going okay. I'm sorry, there I called out. Typical. Typical. Well, we, we decide. No, Typical. No, she's worked so hard, Gordon. You no. don't know. You don't. So what down. he's trying to do is to find I know, but you haven't people. been here. Are you running away? Laura, Come over. Laura. Come over. No, because you don't know my role. Laura. Laura. Grow up. No. Calm down. I can't do what that. What about the big sister here? He's, You're not even listening. She's fantastic, but when You're she fine. runs out, I have to I pick the shit out. up. Calm down. I was back in the morning. Calm Laura, down. Laura, it's completely stupid walking off. Let her walk off. Let her walk off. What's your role? General manager, front of house. Bollocks. No chance. Morgan's restaurant was being run like a ladies' lunch club until I made Helen general manager. One thing you've got is balls, you know that? Her sister Laura didn't like it one bit. You tell these two okay. to do my role and okay. you can stick that gun. Okay. I'm sorry, there I can't out. Typical. Well, that's tough. They either change or go bankrupt. Morgan's can only survive by attracting local people. Before I redesign the menu, I'll have to find out what they really want. What do you look for when you go out to your local eatery? Um, something quick, um, tasty, simple. Have you heard of Morgan's? Yes. And feedback? Not too good, I'm afraid. <laughs> what would you look for in your local restaurant? To be treated nice by the staff uh -huh. and to be treated as an individual. Good. And how much do you expect to pay for dinner? What would you be happy with? I don't pay, my boyfriend will pay. Morgan's menu belongs in a bad, expensive gastro pub. My plan is to modernise it with fresh ingredients and lower the prices. We stripped it back to basics and homed in on good, local, honest produce and kept it very, very simple. Something light, vibrant, a salmon, for instance, poached in a really nice autumnal broth. It doesn't get any better than that.
going to buy one item here, something simple, something local. Morgan's middle-class neighbourhood is full of foodies. They love fresh, tasty ingredients served up in healthy, attractive dishes. Incredibly, Sandy and Phil haven't realised this, even though there's a great organic market on their doorstep. I'm Sandy. Yeah, Sandy. Nice to meet you, Phil. Slightly dotty. Guess where she gets the meat from? Uh, also, it's a supermarket. It is a supermarket, yeah, that's right. However, that's stopped now. Um, we're going to look for some lamb steaks. Something right simple, something local, and something not too expensive. OK. This is excellent, locally produced lamb. It just gives a little bit of yeah. excitement from the waitresses to sort of, A, yeah. this is local organic yeah. lamb, B, we got it from the farmer's market this morning in our street, and it just starts to make it feel a little bit more fucking romantic. Thank you. Okay. Come yeah, and please. We'll be 53 or 6. We don't do Tesco club points, so call it 50 quid for guys. OK, lamb steaks, yes? Yes. A little bit of rosemary, a little bit of garlic. Yeah, bones on. Phil's a self-taught chef who knows very little, so I'll have to start from scratch with him. What you've got to do is just remember you're stepping up to the challenge. Huh? Big time. This lamb steak is my first dish designed for Morgan's traditional menu. Get some colour on there? Not quite. We'll serve it for Sunday lunch tomorrow. And then finally, yeah, gravy, lamb sauce over the top. Now, if anyone complains, paying $12.50 for a lamb steak, it's clean, it's local, it's fresh. That, for me, oozes value for money. It's just about going back to basics. Really simple dish, tasty, easy to do. It just wants me to succeed, like. Sunday isn't a day of rest in the restaurant business. There's lots of money to be made. Incredibly, Morgan's was closed on Sundays. But to test my new team and my new menu, I've decided to open for lunch. It's Helen's day off. So sensitive assistant manager Laura is in charge. Laura? Or supposed to be. Where in the fuck is everyone? Today was a big chance to impress me. She says she's got a business degree. Laura? So who's running it today? None of the managers in. None of our so-called I'm not assistants. sure whether Laura is in today. So who's leading it today? Who's running the fucking restaurant today? Basically, Laura on her own, probably. Will she be in? It's a fucking joke. What's worse is Laura's responsibility to sort out the reservations. Where's the table plan for today? Laura we're must the, have it. We're just the chefs. <laughs> My host Sandy hasn't turned up either. The fucking plot thickens. She's uh, having pains in her chest last <laughs> night, so... This yeah. place needs a person to come in in the morning, open up and fucking inspire everyone, check on the kitchen, work with the kitchen, table plan, and give some oomph, but it's like a... It's like a free house here, you know that? It's 12.45 and Laura's still not here. Hi, uh, Laura. Um, good afternoon. It's Gordon. I'm in the restaurant. Uh, I can't believe I'm chasing the management to come into work in their own restaurant on such a crucial day. I've been told Sandy's at home resting. Sandy! Sandy! But she won't even answer. Oh, fucking hell. Sunday, bloody Sunday. If you're not prepared to face up the responsibilities of running a fucking business, then why open it in the first place? Pathetic. Fucking pathetic. Morning. Morning. Laura finally turns up, but no apology. <laughs> to cap it all, she can't even find her own table plan. Has anybody seen the page at the box? No. The first customers are due in 20 minutes. Two hours ago, we were in the same you know, situation as what I said. Are we looking for it? Sorry. Now she's just been rude. Laura? Laura, come here a minute. Come here a minute. Come here a minute. Is, is this because it's, uh, things ran quite smoothly last night, so it's like a ploy to sort of mess things up? I'll run the fucking show if you don't show me some form of fucking business study degree that you've been fucking harping on and you've got. Sorry, I just can't. 
Mm. Well, stop being so fucking stupid. Now you're blaming me for the fucking reservation book. Two hours ago, when you were in bed, we were in here looking for the fucking thing. It's gone. Can we move on and try to get some form of shape in this restaurant? Okay. Isn't that the most sensible thing to do? But let me just tell you, what I've witnessed in the last three hours here... Hello? You can shake your head and run off again. This time, I don't give a fuck. But don't dare blame me for this chaotic mess. You don't have to be so rude. Laura, come here a minute. Oh, not again. Not again. Not again. Bollocks. Unbelievable. Hi, Helen. I'm desperate for a real manager. I'm just concerned, Helen. You know that. I'm just like, fucking staff have gone. The two are in the kitchen. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Helen's on her way in, but I have to run it until she gets here. Uh, Emma, you serve the starters. Come round and jump on the main courses, yeah? How are you? Welcome. Great. Good to see you. How are we doing? Now we're up against it. A birthday party for 12 have turned up unannounced. Clear your space, clear your area, so you've got a nice, clean, yeah, area to think and fucking work with, yeah? Welcome. Good to see you. It's been a bit of a manic morning for a Sunday. Just face the music and dance. At least someone's happy. For what we're about to receive, may the great architect of the universe make us truly thankful. Amen. With Phil in the kitchen, they might well need the Almighty's help. I hope to God he remembers what I've taught him. Uh, now I'm reduced to waiting on tables. It's how I started out. The birthday man himself. Thank you. You're allowed a second portion and the third vegetable soup. Oh, What's wrong? Talk to me. I forgot to put the sauce on. Come on, come on. Think. Concentrate. Concentrate. Come on. What I need in here yeah. hey, is for you to stay on top of it. You know that, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Before you start sending that main course, in your mind, have a little rehearsal. Lamb, cabbage, potato, carrot, sauce. Just run it through. And the more you test your mind, you can't forget. The cavalry has arrived at last. Helen. I might have to see you. What I'm more pissed with anything is just the most amazing fucking potential lunch, fully booked, waiting list for lunch, and fucking, yeah, a golden opportunity going down the drain. Yeah? However, you're here. Yeah? Stabilize the ship. Thank you for all your help. Come on, Phil. Don't forget what's in the oven. No, 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 no. Yeah, and start organizing how you're going to start dressing nine main courses with Emma. Emma! Yes, chef! You need a chicken on an aisle, please, for you Phil's concentration deserts him, and he's making charcoal again. Oh, dear. That's bad. At least one chef here has high standards. Phil's sous chef, Emma, turns out to be a dark horse. She's quick, diligent, and passionate. Her talents go beyond sticky toffee pudding. Phil can't cope without her. It's like home cooking, isn't it? It's like, this has really kicked everything into touch now. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it means a while to me to stay busy on a Sunday because it just wasn't and that's why I'm here now so that things go well and we take a lot of money and we'll be all back next Sunday. I was right to put Helen in charge. We've just about got away with it. But with Sandy ignoring me and Laura Strops, it's not good enough. You've got to understand, I'm feeling sick. I arrived here this morning and it was pandemonium. So whilst I totally respect you weren't feeling well, I can still do with your support. You have my support. We're drawing a line today and we're moving forward. It's not a lifestyle, it's a business and we're going to treat it like a business. I want you to let your chef do his job. And if he doesn't do that job, get rid of him. Okay. Really sorry. But if you don't fucking act and cook and run this place like a head chef, then don't expect to be here. I've been really struggling with how to relaunch this shambolic restaurant. But I've had an idea, to invite some local celebrities and create a stir. Around here, it's littered with wags, actresses and actors. Uh, Hollyoaks is filmed around the corner, and it's a perfect opportunity to get some really good publicity for the restaurant. So, it's neighbourhoods, and the minute anyone spots anyone famous in there, they all want to descend upon it, so that creates a buzz. It's a race against time for Phil. He's got to master some classic and healthy recipes to lure those ladies who lunch. Taste? Tell me what that needs. Salt, yeah. Good. Emma's the best thing in the kitchen. With her helping Phil, we may succeed with the relaunch. You are the second chef. There's no reason why not you can't run this place down the line in his day off. You know that. Well, You're that's more my than intention. capable. I really mean that. And if you can be that passionate about a sticky toffee pudding, 
fuck knows what you're going to be like when you're let loose on fucking meat or fish. Huh? For the relaunch, I thought of a new role for Sandy to stop her meddling. Why don't we, for the first time ever, in between courses, start auctioning off some of these items? Oh, wow. I'm very impressed with that. Yeah? Selling antiques is what she's good at, and there's plenty around to keep her occupied. Just in between courses? Yeah? Really we can start moving some of the stuff. Yeah. The great thing is, of all, he's actually defined everyone's role, and that's it, man. We're all going to stick to it, and life should be a lot better. We fully booked for the relaunch today, and I'm nervous. I've staked my reputation on Morgan's. Key to my strategy is Phil's ability to cook my new menu, but I'm still not convinced about him. Right, chicken in. Skin side down first. Olive oil. Why not butter? Um, put a uh, little bit on the pan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has to concentrate on getting the basics right. If you can just slow down for me and fucking think. A little bit harder. We're fucking 90% of the way there, you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Do not get distracted. Excellent. Morning. Morning. How are you? Fine, thanks. Come through, come through. Morning. Come through. All oh, right, let me put these down. Just going through two or three dishes. Chicken with the lentils and the poached salmon in an awesome broth. Mm -hmm. mm. And nice crispy skin. Mm. Mm. Tasty, very tasty. Mm -hmm. You have got to realise the potential here. 48 book for tonight. Normal restaurants are struggling to get fucking five in. Let's go through. It's time for a pep talk. And my ragtag team needs some help. Even from sensitive flowers. Laura has finished sulking and has decided to lend a hand. Laura, welcome back. Thank you. Concerned about assistant manager, manager, or just... Concerned about running the place? Just concerned that the place is running smoothly. Good. I've still expected him to roar, Hello. but for now, Hello. I'm quite happy. I'm quite stable. He unsettles me. <laughs> Fucking big night tonight, yeah? Could be something quite major. Don't fuck it. When the shit hits the fan, we stay united. We've all got our jobs to do with no interference. No interference. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to take a back seat. The celebrities have taken the bait. First in are Hollyoaks stars Sarah Dunn and Jennifer Biddle. Hey. The footballers' wives have come too, including Louise Owen, Michael's wife. And next in is Sherry Murphy. Where wags hang out, others will surely follow. My strategy has paid off. Good to see you. Hungry? Starving. Yes? Gonna eat dessert as well? Yeah, there's no skinny minis here, are there? We've got proper, uh, proper, no, like proper foodies. Okay, who doesn't need to be behind the bar? There's no one on the floor. There's five people behind the bar. Helen's cracking the whip and keeping Sandy and the waitresses in line. The new menu's going down well. Can I get the roast chicken, please? Table seven. Three chicken. But Phil has a problem. Laura, an order's been taken. You took it on table six, and there's no check in the kitchen and nothing on the top there. An order has gone missing and the customers are waiting. Can we have been waiting one? 20 minutes. Can you go and sort it out, please? Did you get a table six in? No. No? Come on, go on. It was the um, smoked salmon. Smoked salmon for me and chicken and lamb. Start us out straight away, please, Em. Yeah? It's not your fault. Yeah, One adult, one salmon, one chicken, one lamb, please, Phil. Yeah? Try and push that table forward. Fuck yeah. it now. I might like tonight, Joey. You know I mean? Thank fuck the kitchen solid. That's all I'm saying. Oh, God. Two risottos, yes? Yes. Good man. Don't drop, yeah? Drop. No. Will Phil keep his concentration and cook my menu well enough to impress Walton's glitterati? This is two more fucking nothing. It's very hard to keep fucking concentration. Despite the cock-up, everyone seems happy. I just hope the customers want to bid for Sandy's antiques. Sandy may be clueless about running restaurants, but when it comes to selling antiques, she's a natural. Mr Ramsey, what are we going to start it off as? £20. Pounds. Right, somebody will bid me £20. Pounds. <laughs> £20 pounds is good. £20. £30. Any advance on board? £50 pounds is thick. One of the old pink shirt. 
70 over there, 80, 90, 100 pounds, that's your bid. Thank you. Dirty chef's a happy chef. Like a pig in shit. Let's go, we have table 10. 45, thank you. We're selling at 45 pounds now. I'll get it, I'll get it. Oh, 50 just in time. 50 pounds, 50. The local celebrities are flashing their cash, but what do they think of the food? It's very nice. <laughs> it's delicious, actually, because it's a bit crispy, but it's also very tender as well. It's lovely. Really, really nice. I'm really impressed. I'll definitely come back again. It's been somewhere that I've never actually come along to because I've heard good and bad things about it. But, um, yeah, definitely come back. Phil's cooked his heart out and not burnt a thing. I feel more than control. <laughs> as he says, as he just fucking knocked the salt over. Fucking hell. What a twat. Emma's played a vital role too. I just think it's gone well today. It's, it's been a pleasure to work today, actually. Selling at 65 pounds. Morgan's is transformed. Just a week ago, it was in chaos under Dotty Sandy, serving up tasteless stodge from a supermarket. 140 pounds. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Good. Huh? That's what I do. Well, you're in your element, good. for God's sake. I've never seen you so fucking happy. <laughs> uh, how much do you take in fucking selling the antiques? What do we sell? Five, five six hundred pounds. Five, six hundred pounds. Fantastic. Sorry, in 15 minutes. Yeah. That's fucking good news. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Tonight, you found your role. Don't take that the wrong way, but that's what you're good at doing. I agree with you. And you have been the toughest nut I've ever <laughs> attempted to crack. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Dying room. I just want you two to, to combine. No one's in competition with each other. You know, you both have an amazing fucking role. Yeah. The kitchen, solid. I cannot tell you the difference from tonight in comparison to what went on seven days ago. It's extraordinary. And the minute you start changing it and reverting back to the old ways, you're fucked. I'm back in Liverpool. It's a month after I turned failing Bistro Morgan's into a packed neighbourhood restaurant. But there's been a shocking development. Helen's told me that following a row, she's let someone go. Um, I'm on the search for Phil. Um, he's left Morgan's and uh, you know, he set up camp here. So, uh, down to get hold of him and find out what the fuck's going on, really. Jesus. What the fuck are you doing here? How are you, well, everyone? Yeah, well, how are you? How are you? Sad. I'm sad. sad. Yeah, good to see you. Feeling sad? You looking well? I feel well. What happened? She said that um, she'd had loads of complaints. I was told my services were not required no more. There's not a lot I can do about it now, so I've moved on and I aim to put me in mark in here. Without me there, Phil's concentration went again. But it's actually good news. Now, as a sous chef, he'll train under an experienced head chef. Just learn to stay focused, do what I'm supposed to do. Listen and concentrate more on my job. Just feel less stressed. Do you want to take that, please? It's for the best that Phil has left Morgan's, oh, and I'm pleased for him. I'm off to the restaurant to find out the owner's side of the story. I'm worried about what's happened to my menu and just who's cooking it. I'm slightly nervous because it was a month ago, fucking hard work, and I came across an owner that was totally clueless when it came to running a business. Ladies, hello. How are you, darling? Well, Hello, yeah. thank you. good to see you. You well? Hello, yes. Nice to see you. How are you? Got that colour back on your cheeks again. Yes. How are you, darling? Welcome back. Are you well? Lovely you've been in the you. you've been in the hairdresser. Oh yes, cool. You look as immaculate as ever. Thank you very much. Huh? Lovely. So who's in the kitchen? Emma's still here. Emma's right? now. Emma's now our head chef. Is she? Yeah. That's fantastic yeah. news. Yeah. My biggest worry about Phil was the level of his concentration. We had to let him go. Mm. We thought that, you know, where we want to be and Emma was the next step yeah. and she's been there for us and dedicated and 100% we've had fun, yeah. so... Hello. So Emma, the dark horse of the kitchen, has been rewarded for all her hard work. Have you taken the reins? Yeah, I've tried to. I'm Good getting more confidence. I remember you saying to me, come out your corner, you're like a little mouse. Yeah. And everyone said to me, oh, Emma's got very authoritative in the kitchen. I'm pleased. I'm so pleased. That means the whole place has been run by females. By females? Which is working fucking well. 
Well, I'm dying to eat. I can't believe how can't quiet this is. You. The beef looks fantastic out there with the slayer egg mash. The braised beef, yeah. And braised with apricots. Definitely not. Oh, Head chefs are predominantly male, and it's just good that I'm having a go and someone's given me the chance to have a go. It's stuck to me to prove myself now. So last week we took um, just under £4,000. Yeah. Helen's computerised the accounts. A big contrast to Sandy's chaos. Yeah. week before I came here, you barely hit £1,500. We were losing, then we broke even, and now we're in profit. Uh -huh. And we have done for three weeks we've yeah. been in profit. You seem a lot more confident than you did. A month ago, yeah. in terms of your role yeah. defined, I've, well, people have sort of had confidence in me, which is the, f you know, the first thing about you can portray what you want to do and put your foot down, and people don't listen to you. But once you've been given a defined role and people start believing in you, then yeah. it actually gives you yeah. power and wings to want to fly and do yeah, what absolutely. what you're doing. It's great to see the restaurant full, and Emma is so tuned into the menu that she's even added a dish of her own, braised beef. Thank you. Nice. Lovely, Vicky. Look how tender that beef is. It's just falling apart. Almost like it's melting on your fork. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's delicious. <laughs> Fucking hell. It's so upsetting, you know that. In comparison to the dinner I had last time I was here, I just cannot compare. This is delicious. Yeah. Food was Great. delicious. Great. Really good. Absolutely spot on. I wanted to impress you. Yeah, you certainly did that. Don't stop. Nice. Yeah. Good night. Good Thank night. You. Ladies. Thank you. Not a man in sight. <laughs> <Fuck me. laughs> Not a man in sight is just the way we like it. <laughs> Not Thank a man you. in sight. <laughs> the ladies of Morgan's are now making money against all the odds. Girl power has saved this restaurant. Can I see the wine next? I'm happy. Morgan's is now running as a neighbourhood restaurant. Helen's in control of her business. Emma clearly knows what the fuck she's doing in the kitchen, and she seems so much more confident. Happy customers, happy staff, and the food was delicious. Thank God for that. Morgan's has got it right.